Christy Williams, Director of Parks and Recreation for the City of Spring Hill, Tennessee, and welcome to Brilliant Strokes. Brilliant Strokes is an intergenerational art program provided by the Arts Build Communities Grant through the Tennessee Arts Commission. And if you would like to be a part of this program, you can register online through the city website, www.springhilltn.org, or through the Parks and Recreation's Facebook page. All of our instructors are local artists, and we are so grateful to them for donating their time and their talents to be part of this unique program. Have fun. Hello, I'm Debbie Cornette. Today, I'm going to show you on a piece of board, a, a basic way to paint a pine tree or fir tree. Now, those are not easy to paint because a lot of times in nature, you look at a tree and you think you see it, doing one thing, but it really in reality does another thing. So um, what we're gonna start with is, and I'll tell you the differences between what you might tend to want to paint and then the difference that will make it look a little bit more realistic. So the first thing we're gonna do, and this is really kind of starting from scratch. You don't need to sketch it out or anything because what we're gonna do with the paintbrush is just like sketching it out. So the first thing we're gonna do is get a brown. I'm not crazy about using black in paintings at all unless you can avoid it, but let's get a brown. And what we're gonna do is paint the trunk. This is a tall, skinny tree that you can paint for Christmas with ornaments or snow or, you know, just a, a forest scene or just practicing painting trees, which is not always easy. What we want to do is take this right down the middle in a jagged straight line. So this will be the trunk. You don't want it to be really uh, complete, perfectly straight, but you want it to be skinny. So you dab it all the way down. Now we'll worry about the bottom later, but that's kind of what the tree is gonna look like. That's the height. So you can see it's very tall and skinny, which is fun, because you can do a lot with it. So what we're gonna do now, is get some green, and you can have some brown in there too, but mainly green, because we're gonna try to do the branches. And what you do is you get your greens. First, let's do a dark green. This is called grass green, but for the purpose of just basically the shape. What you do to get a realistic pine tree is, in, like the branches don't go down like this is how you would think they go, but that is not the case. Really, they stick straight out. So what we're gonna do, and I was told this on a video, is you start dabbing right in the middle because what we're gonna do is give this, the tree its shape. And the reason you're starting in the middle is because you don't wanna compete. If you start down here, you're gonna have, it, the tendency is to have a fat tree all the way up and you get overwhelmed with trying to give it a nice cylinder shape that gets mainly but bigger at the bottom than it does at the top. So. You're gonna get your green, and so just really, really space it out. I mean, it can be like this at first. And just dab it, dab, 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 like that. Not sideways, I mean, not up and down, not down, just, or not straight up, not straight down, just across like that. So this is kind of like the Bob Ross technique. He likes to make happy little trees with a fan brush, but we're not using a fan brush right now because we're beginners. So let's do it at the top. So obviously what you're gonna do is want it to be um, skinnier at the top. Up here, barely anything. Down here, it's gonna be kind of wide. That's why we start in the middle so we don't compete too much with the, just dab. So you get an idea of clumpy leaves or needles actually, it's an evergreen. give it some thickness and where I go to the beach in Florida these kind of trees are popular that just have the tops and they look so funny from far away because they're see-through basically but they're so cool to just kind of dab on up there and again what I did on the back of this palette or this plank is just gave a little white background 
Um, you can sand this before you start. You can wait till you're done and sand it, but it gives it a little texture to paint on wood. Sometimes it's easier than a canvas because it's the canvas is so smooth. So you get the idea of a tree now. So we're gonna kind of fill in a little bit here. And I said before, don't be afraid to get too much paint on wood because it absorbs a lot. Kind of filling a little with puffy branches. Take a look at it from afar to see if what needs to be kind of filled in or left alone. Get a little water, but not too much. toward the bottom here. There, so you get the idea. That already looks more like a tree than the, the triangle shape of green. So from this point, basically, what you do with it from this point is up to you. So what I thought we would do today is I'll show you kind of how to do some snow on a tree and um, some, some contrast, like some of the the leaves or the needles actually will be kind of lighter on the edges. Um, some of this been covered with snow anyway, but you kind of get the idea. Put in some, get a lime green, just fill in some of the gaps with a on the edges, the highlights is where the light will hit. Those will be a little lighter. And you can mix these greens up a little. Just put in some light, lighter stuff. Build it up a little. The main thing is don't cover in all the spaces, you know, between the the branches get it'll, it'll just look like a competing green blob. <laughs> and just dab it on out there. Okay, looking like a little tree, huh? You can't mess up really unless you just do overdo it. There. So there's the tree, the basic tree. Let's do something else here. We're gonna take the, uh, go back to the, the um, trunk. Let's go back and get our brown. Let's get a little definition here. Okay. Just put a little bottom on it, like it's on it planted. What we might want to do is put a little definition on the trunk. It's kind of fun to do that. Maybe just a little bit in there, like branches. So you could do this for winter scene. You could do a summer, you could do fall, put some colors behind it, like oranges and stuff. Basically, it's kind of, get a little definition, okay. Now, let's do some snow. I usually do this every Christmas. Paint trees and put ornaments on it and snow and just some color, pops of color like red or blue or teal or purple or whatever I think people will like. But people always go to red that they like the most for Christmas. Okay, we get some white. 
basically what we're gonna do is the exact same thing we've been doing, but we're gonna lay it on top of the branches. So starting down here, get a little more water. I'm just gonna kind of lay it on there. Cause snow rests on the branches. See, it's got a snow effect, right? At least it doesn't look exactly like it, like, but it gives you the feeling of it being like snow. And that's what we want is for it to feel like what you want it to feel like. The feel goods. Sometimes it'd be in the front because you see it from the front. Put it just resting on the branches. I'll go on up quickly. So you almost can't mess it up and then we're gonna put a little couple ornaments on it and we'll be done. It'll be a spring tree. A lot of dabbing goes into this one. And really your brush stays flat in this way almost the whole entire painting. Use the sharp, the edge of your brush. So you make it really nice and flat. There, get that tree effect. And what we can do too, because it's snow, a little smudging down here, so it's got something sitting on. Real simple. Let's put a couple little ornaments. So what we'll do is get a brush that's pretty small. Let's do a little purple. Let's do purple and red since I have that out. If you have a little round brush, that'd be good, but you need something you can kind of smush down on the wood. Kind of just do little circles. Small is better, really, in something like this. It's hard to get a round shape with this, but. So you can put little birds in there, you can put ornaments, you can put a little nest. I put little stars on top of the tree sometimes. Let's get some red. Doesn't matter if some of these colors get together. It's good to have a little red and purple and you can get a little green in there just to give it, it doesn't mind being mixed up together. That's about it. Thank you very much. Call me if you have any questions. So if you like what you've seen and you want to take part in Brilliant Strokes, don't forget, go online to our Facebook page, that's Spring Hill TN Parks and Recreation, or to the Spring Hill City website and register. Registration opens February 18th, and the first eight people to register for each class We'll get a free goodie bag. Can't wait to be, get creative and have fun. <laughs>